Mr. Crispin here again with another boring video and today we're going to carry on with these cylinders. If you haven't seen part 2 of this series go back and look at part 2 as it'll all be much clearer but uh, towards the end of that video I loctited in some cast iron liners and uh, in this video I'm going to bore these cast iron liners out to size I'm going to bore this smaller bore out to size and I'm going to face the two faces perpendicular to the bores and I'm going to do all that on the Myford lathe here. So first up I'm going to bore these cast iron liners and these need to end up uh, as similar to each other as I can get them in terms of diameter. To do that I've already bored this one to two thou under size so it's two thou too small at the moment I'm now going to bore this one on camera out to finish size then without adjusting the boring bar I'm going to swap the cylinder blocks over and run the boring bar through this block at exactly the same settings and take a spring cut or two and that should ensure that I have two very similar sized bores I'm just going to rough this out and then we'll measure it and see where we are There we are all the way through, so we'll measure that. The telescopic ball gauge is my weapon of choice for the moment. Well we've got uh, nearly a hundred thou to go so I'll take a few more roughing passes of similar depth to the one we've just done. So checking the centres are all clean. We can just load the bar back in. and we're ready to set, a, set the next cut and take another one. To give some clarity I thought I'd just draw this out and uh, don't ask what drawing spec this is, we'll just say it's to a Mr Crispin standard. Uh, but basically let's say I wanted to machine an accurate diameter, how would I set the bar up to do this? Well first of all you'll see I've got the bit going through at 45 degrees and the main benefit of that is that it gives me an accurate surface from which I can measure the tip so I can measure this and use that as a reference and as you see me do in part two I could machine a ball and say well I want to make it 20 thou bigger then all I do measure what it is currently extend by 10 thou check the position that this has come out of true 10 thou and then run through again and I can be pretty confident that it will then machine 10 thou off the radius giving me a 20 thou bigger diameter and uh, as well as using a micrometer for that I can also use a, uh, a clock uh, although this is more suited to a perpendicular bit where I'm pushing truly up and down but let's say that I've uh, started afresh and I need some way of setting the bar up from scratch well it's easy to do I'll just draw a centre line in for reference Okay, so what we really need to know is the cutting diameter. And to get the cutting diameter, we can work out the cutting radius. So from this tip to this centre line, or the centre of rotation. So 
so that tip is going to rotate around this centre. But I can't measure to the centre very easily. But what I can do is measure from the cutting tip to the back of the bar. And we know that that will be the cutting radius plus the radius of the bar. It's the radius of the bar, that's the cutting radius. So let's say I get my micrometer, I measure across the bar and the tip, and let's say that for that I get uh, 60 millimetres. Okay, so I know that 60 millimetres minus the radius is going to give me the cutting radius. So for the radius I measure the bar, let's say I get 40 for that. From there to there, so from there to there the radius has got to be 20. So all I have to do is take 20 off the original 60 and obviously 60 minus 20 gives us 40. So the cutting radius is 40 mil giving us a cutting diameter of 80 mil. So say I'm starting from scratch, I can be pretty confident if I set that bar up to 60mm from there to there, measuring with a micrometer, that's going to give me a pretty near 80mm bore. Uh, the only other influences I can think of are uh, run out in the bar that could add or subtract to where the exact centre line is. But that's the lesson over. I'll bore this out till we start to get to the closer dimensions and then we'll reconvene. We've got six thou left to come out and what I'm going to do is just give this uh, tip a bit of a clean up with a stone and uh, that'll give me a few passes just to let the tip bed in and then it should be nice and sharp for the final pass and then it should still be sharp for the other block. So I've got it here in the vise and the first thing I'm going to do is colour it in so I can see where I'm actually sharpening and uh, doing this you do end up with a bit of a multifaceted tool but oh well and then all I do is take a little stone and a little bit of oil and then I just sharpen the edges starting behind the cutting edge and working up to the cutting edge so you know that you're not rounding it off. And I'll do this all the way along wherever I think it's likely to be making contact with the bore. And the idea is just to resharpen the edge. Slightly more tricky on the radius but the same principle. And I'm pretty pleased with that. So I should be at final size now and I'm just taking some spring cuts. All I do to do this is I just relax the tail stock slightly. That allows me to move the bar out of the way so it doesn't scratch the bore. And I can wind back till the tip's clear. Re-engage the tail stock. Lock it off again. And we're ready to cut again. Now I could spring cut in both directions, so feed uh, both ways over the tool, but I've noticed that when you feed backwards it takes an extra big cut and I think this carriage must cockle slightly depending on which way it's being pulled, so I'm sticking with feeding in one direction. Right, I'm very happy with the size so I'm going to swap the blocks over. Right, that is the new block installed. So I'm just going to draw a circle around both ends of the bore so that I know I've machined a full bit off. Oh, sorry, the whole circumference. And now I'm going to reinstall this bar without adjusting that tip at all. These bores are fine now, they're both to a good size. 
and I'm going to move on to this smaller bore. So to cut this in the same way I need to move the block downwards and back towards me. So to move it downwards all I'm going to do is swap those thick packings for a, a thinner one or a thinner pair and I'm going to wind the cross slide over to move from this centre line to this centre line. One thing I need to do before I can move is overcome the backlash accurately because last time I moved the cross slide I was going that direction now I need to come back so there's a couple of things I can do one is while the cross slide's still locked I can wind the dial back until I feel it stop and that should get rid of nearly all of the backlash the other thing I can do is to put a clock on something on the cross slide just to confirm when it actually starts to move so uh, there we are I'll now unlock the cross slide and now I'll watch for the dial to start to move okay and now using the hand wheel I can wind back one and three quarter inches which is the distance between centers nine ten one inch one two three four five and that should be on centre. Now I've already shown this process in, so uh, I'll just do it off camera. I'm going to take a skim down the bore, measure the position while it's still on the size, make any adjustments to the setup to bring the bore to the correct position and then I'll bore it to full size. I'll do that then we'll reconvene. Okay so now for my next trick I'm going to face the blocks off on the lathe. And to do this I've put a revolving centre in the tail stock and I have mounted the cylinders on an expanding mandrel. And this should sit between centres. And I'll be able to spin this round at a slow speed and face off with a normal turning tool. Something like this. So to recap we've got the revolving centre, the expanding mandrel, the cylinder, uh, the drive dog and the drive plate. And if I can turn this round I'll show you I've got a little toolmaker's clamp clamping the drive dog to the drive peg because otherwise, um, as I'll demonstrate, when the weight of the cylinder catches up over the top, it can fall. And uh, I'm pretty sure that will happen in running, seeing as I'm running quite slowly, so this little clamp solves that problem. Right. I've got um, about 30 sad come off each face. So just checking it won't hit anything and then and uh, I can feel we're not actually too out of balance anyway. I can't feel it bumping. Okay, it's touched on. Make sure I'm back past the full swing and I'll give it a little cut. Not bad. 
see if I can do something about the surface finish, but I think that'll do the job well. Well, this is more boring than boring, but I think I've sorted the surface finish out with a piece of high-speed steel with a sharp cutting edge and a bit of oil. Now, sometimes you wish you had power cross feet that could have tidied the workshop by now or organised some taps and dies. Right, well that's all four faces are uh, faced off, so I'm going to call that quits for part three. I hope you've enjoyed watching, and see you on the next video.